Doug Smith with Family Friendly Canine Dog Training in Northern California. My three friends and I, Jerry, Ernie, and Bob, are here to talk to you about uh, e-collars today in a series of videos that we're going to be doing in order to help you get started with your e-collar work, if that's something that you're going to be doing on your own, or what to expect if you hire a trainer that is planning to do some e-collar work. Today's video is really just on the very basics of how to set an e-collar up and what e-collars that we use, what brand we use, and how they function and how to set them up on, upon delivery of, of this uh, unit when you first get it. So let's get started. First, uh, in the box here, you have a transmitter. This transmitter is what the handler will use in order to communicate with their dog as they're working through the various e-collar protocols and some of the things that we'll demonstrate in some later videos. Secondly, you have the receiver and this is what goes on the dog. Uh, this is uh, just a simple buckle collar, but if you look on Amazon and some of the other sites, you might find some different ones that have bungees or some clasps, uh, different kinds. I, I prefer the ones with, uh, with a clasp because I don't have to adjust uh, the fitting uh, every time that I put it on the dog. It's able just to be sized at one size and able to make sure that I have that, that snug fit each and every time that, um, that we put it on. All right, the other thing you have is a charger and you'll notice that it is split at the end there. That is so that you can plug in both your receiver and your transmitter at the same time uh, in order to charge them up. I'll tell you that they really keep a pretty long charge I don't think I've ever had, really had one run out in a day on me, um, but uh, I charge them overnight. They're very quick to charge, so it's, it's a great tool, but uh, they have the split end so that you can do both at the same time. You also have a couple of additional um, sensors uh, for the receiver, and these are longer uh, sensors in case your dog may have uh, thicker fur you'd probably want to use uh, these, uh, the ones that they come with here. And there's a tool in here uh, that helps you take them on and off of uh, this receiver here. So these are replacements here. These are the short ones you can see that come on it. Uh, I don't think they've ever come on with the long ones, but in case they do, you might want to think about that. My two labs back there use the short ones. They don't have real thick fur and it seems to make a good contact. But if you need the longer contacts, go ahead and use those for, you know, again, thicker fur. And it might be sort of trial and error as you're going through this uh, to figure out which ones you need. But nonetheless, kind of nice of them to include those in the package as well. And along with a lanyard, if that's something that you want to do. Um, you know, there are uh, lots of people that like to just sort of, this kind of goes clips on transmitter there. And this can just kind of hang around your neck if, if that's something that you're interested in. Uh, myself, I don't use that. I just kind of use uh, my hand. It's a little more comfortable for me in carrying it and doing other things, but certainly that's available for you. All right, last but not least, um, something that uh, I'm not uh, always good at, right, is instructions. Uh, but uh, anyway, the instruction booklet is in here if there's some uh, other things and questions that you might have about the, the e-call and the setup. Uh, there's that instruction booklet, but I'll do the best I can here to help walk through all of the different things that you need. And there's also a little test, a little plastic um, uh, test piece here that will allow you to test uh, both without having to, uh, both the receiver um, <clears throat> and the transmitter at the same time. And I can kind of show you how that works too. Uh, not real critical, but if it's, you know, it might be something if you're questioning, Jesus, is this thing working or not working? Uh, you can put this thing on there and it's just sort of a little test light. All right, so let's get started on the general setup. Uh, first of all, let's go through your transmitter. So your transmitter, you will notice, has several buttons. It has a uh, black and a red button uh, on either side here. And these are your two main buttons that you'll be using uh, pretty well exclusively. Uh, right up on top is uh, your transmitter you, where you dial in your intensity. And you'll notice as you turn it up and down, the numbers on the dial there uh, will turn up and down as well. And the other thing you will notice uh, is a little letter, uh, two little letters in this case, M and C. 
So that M stands for momentary and the C stands for continuous. So what that means is if I select that top black button here, you can see the light goes red, indicating that it's sending a signal to the receiver, but you can see even if I hold it down, it only flashed once. That's momentary stim. It's just a momentary boop stim versus uh, when I press on the red button there, you can see that red light stays on because it's doing a continuous stim uh, communicating with the, with the receiver that's on the dog. All right, and this button here is not one that uh, I ever use. So in our future videos, you won't see me demonstrating this at all, but what this does is if you press this, then uh, these two buttons become a vibrate function of the collar instead of the stem. However, it does not, uh, it is not regulated uh, by this, uh, this dial here. It's just one intensity, which is why we don't use it. We find it very important to be able to work with dogs on the lowest, uh, the lowest setting that they feel, uh, just real low levels, and be able to utilize higher levels if necessary for different things. Um, you know, it might be in different environments and things, and you might need a little higher level. So, it, so when you're using the stem, it allows you to adjust to that. Okay, so we don't, we don't ever use that one. Now, <clears throat> on the back, you will see uh, two buttons as well. Uh, this big black button here is what um, turns on the, uh, the receiver. So if I press it here, you will see, boom, comes on. Okay, if I hold and press it again, uh, you will see it goes off. All right, so uh, very easy, turn it on. And you'll see the M and the C there. Um, the second little button here is what will set up these buttons. Okay, right now it's on M and C as I said, but if I select it one more time, then you have where it just says M. And what that means then is this black button is momentary as it was before, but this red button is momentary instead of continuous, but it's also a boost. So. Uh, you can see there the number jumps up. It's just a momentary, but it does uh, boost, and uh, boost uh, might be something that you want. Uh, we don't find it, uh, again, necessary really to use the boost function. It becomes a little confusing, especially as you're st just starting out, um, and, and you, you hit a button, and then all of a sudden, boom, whoops, you're, you know, your dog really reacts. So uh, we don't uh, use that one. Uh, again, this... Uh, if I push this again, now, let's see, yeah, can you see the C there? So the C means continuous, so both of these buttons now are continuous. Whereas this black one was momentary before, it's now continuous. And the red one, where it was continuous before, is continuous still, but it becomes a boost again. Right, so you can see the number jump up there, and uh, that's what happens on that. So what we recommend, and I'll push this one more time, and it brings us back to the M and C, and that's really what we recommend. So you have the option of a momentary, you have the option of a continuous, okay? And that's how we really recommend uh, using it, and that's what you'll see us demonstrating. You'll see us using a momentary, you'll see us using continuous in some of our training protocols, but in general, that's, uh, that's how that works. So, let's just turn all this stuff on and show you how to do that and, um, and some of the different features that we have here. So here you can see on um, the transmitter, this little red sort of button here, and you'll see a, uh, a similar red button right here on the receiver. So to turn the receiver on, all you need to do is simply kind of put those two together and you see the green light come on, and you'll see that uh, continue to flash. That means it's on and it's charged. If it's ever just flashing red, it means that it's low on charge and you just kind of need to plug it in and get that charged up again. Okay. Let's see. As I said before, um, you can use this um, little tester. I told you I'd show you how that works. So you can see it's on the different little sensors. And if I turn it on, you can see that you know clearly this is working right all right so we know that that's working 
And similarly, uh, let's see, there we go. You can see the two LED right, uh, red lights come on. So as I turn on the transmitter, you can see the red light comes on here. That means that it's uh, got a good signal together, okay? And we just showed that uh, it's also working uh, through our sensors there. Another uh, little neat feature that uh, I actually use quite a bit, um, either at dusk in the morning, because uh, I go out uh, with my dogs early in the morning, or sometimes at night if we're out playing and uh, it gets late, uh, is this light function. Okay, so the same on-off button that controls this uh, transmitter, if you just click it versus holding on to it, uh, let's see here, okay, and now it's flashing, or you can turn it on. Uh, so this is uh, really handy if, uh, if you're out in the morning and you're running, or just out with your dogs in the morning and it's dark, it's really handy to be able to have. Uh, it, it, uh, it illuminates, obviously, their collar, illuminates your path a bit, and allows other cars and things to see you as well. So kind of a really neat function. And if I select it a third time, it turns it off. So don't need to use it, but it's just kind of a neat function that I wanted to make sure and run through with everybody. All right, that's about it for uh, this edition of, uh, of eCallers. And uh, Jerry, Ernie, and Bob and I, thank you for watching this and certainly look forward to recording some additional videos to help you um, beyond taking it out of the box and putting it in our dog, what do we do with it next? I would implore you to not just put it on your dog and start pushing buttons. Uh, whether it's my videos or many others that are out there, please do your research or um, contact a professional to help you condition your dog and start working with your dog the right way and understanding the skill of using this device. We firmly believe in this device and think that it's a fantastic training tool and, uh, and, and I love being able to give these three guys uh, all the off-leash freedom uh, that, they, that they really want and, and, and enables us to do that is, uh, is e-collars and the different training that we do. So thank you for watching. And again, uh, reach out to a professional if you have any additional questions. Uh, certainly reach out to us and um, we'll answer any questions you, uh, you need. And please look for the additional videos that we'll be doing here soon. All right. Thanks again. Uh, Doug Smith, Family Friendly Canine uh, Dog Training in Northern California. Look forward to talking to you soon.